Welcome to Winning Secret TV. If God is for me who can be against me? If God be for us, who can be against us? Paul asked in Romans 8 31 to 39. What can we say about such wonderful things as these? If God is for us, who can ever be against us? Since God did not spare even his own son but gave him up for us all, won't God, who gave us Christ, also give us everything else? Who dares accuse us of whom God has chosen for his own? Will God? No. He is the one who has given us the right to stand with him. Who then will condemn us? Will Christ Jesus? No, for he is the one who died for us and was raised to life for us and is sitting at the place of highest honor next to God, pleading for us. Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity, or are persecuted, or are hungry or cold or in danger or threatened with death? Even the scriptures say, for your sake, we are killed every day, we are being slaughtered like sheep, no, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ, who loved us. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from his love. Death can't, and life can't. The angels can't, and the demons can't. Our fears for today, our worries about tomorrow, and even the powers of hell can't keep God's love away. Whether we are high above the sky or in the deepest ocean, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Incidentally, if you have not subscribed to our channel yet, you can subscribe now. You can simply do this by hopping over to YouTube and type on the search bar on YouTube. Winning Secret TV. Then you hit the search button to go to the channel. You will see the subscription button to subscribe immediately or click on the channel logo to see the entire channel. There you can also see the subscription button and subscribe to not miss out on all the exciting videos that we post practically every week. Thank you very much. All right. This is probably one of the most heartwarming assurances of God's love for us and of our salvation. This knowledge is therefore is enough for a believer never to get discouraged or despaired again, irrespective of how the present presents itself or what the future seems to portend. The believer's future is glorious, heartwarming, enviable, and summarily good and great, as have been captured in the scriptures. For instance, in Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. The Bible says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace, and not of evil, to give you an expected end. And in Psalms 34 verse 10. The Bible says the young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. And of course, in Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1 to 13. The Bible prescribed all of the believer's entitlements and the blessedness of redemption. In verse 2 it says, And all these blessings shall come on thee, and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. And verse 3 says, Blessed shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field. You can read the rest. So in every situation that presents itself contrary to our redemption packages of power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessing as prescribed. In Revelation chapter 5 verse 12, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power, and riches, and wisdom, and strength, and honor, and glory, and blessing. Those are the believer's redemption packages, and he that has promised us, is faithful to fulfill what he has promised, as seen. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 24 where it says, Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. So why should we ever worry? In the presence of sufficiently abundant faithful promises, of our security, sufficiency, longevity, and all-round satisfaction. Stop seeing problems and troubles as an end from the means. No. Instead, we should always see the trial as a mirage and unreal, or as a mere precursor to our emancipation, or the emergence into our glorious destination. Any test or trial that God allows is because he knows that you are able and have the capacity to overcome it. The scripture says so in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13. There hath no temptation taken you but such as is common to man, 
But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. So whenever you notice any contrary situation, to your redemption packages, don't fret, just know that your emancipation is near, know also that it is just a test for you to pass, and that you have the capacity to pass it, before your emergence. Otherwise, if you don't have the capacity, God wouldn't have allowed it. The Bible gives this assurance, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 17. For God loves us with an everlasting love, and does not want us to fail, and that is why He has made it so. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 17. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory, and it gives way to our glorious manifestos. With that, we should always know that, we are not alone and that we are not abandoned. In Isaiah chapter 43 verse 2, the Bible says, When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. We are chosen of God, we are ever in his ever overflowing love. He can never leave nor abandon us. And as the chosen of God, this assurance should be the reason, for us to face every contrary situation with joy, calmness, equanimity, and rejoining. In Philippians chapter 4 and verse 4, the Bible says, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, rejoice. Rejoicing and joy should, as a matter of fact, become one of the believer's distinguishing characteristics. Any supposed believer who is scanty or starving of joy, and rejoicing should have his or her faith in the divine assurance salvation re-examined. Our rejoicing and joy as believers should be anchored, on the fact that God loves us, and He is with us always, and in every situation, not minding the way things might have presented themselves. Let's pray. Our mighty and everlasting Father, we are happy and most delighted in your love. You are the sole reason why we are not perturbed, fidgeted, or despaired. Your love over us is more precious than gold, silver or whatever man can think. Lord we are most grateful unto you, thank you for your provision, protection, providence, guidance, and care. Help us to ever remain faithful and obedient in serving you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch our video. We want to give you another interesting video to watch next. Also, our team would appreciate it if you could like this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends on social media. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, Winning Secret TV, to not miss out on other exciting videos that we post practically every week. Click on any of the videos you will see on the screen carefully handpicked for you to enjoy at the end of this video. Also, you may leave your comment or prayer requests in the comment box and we shall respond to you accordingly. God bless you.